welcome back to Food Truck Crazy. Today we're going to be looking at the Xerox Club or the Zero X Club uh, backup camera system. Why a backup camera system you'd ask? Well, uh, when we do travel, uh, we do need to sometimes stay uh, overnight or over a week and so it's much cheaper for us to stay in an older motor home that we have. And so our backup camera last year decided to die and so I went out and searched and uh, found me a wireless system. For open transparency, I did go and search the uh, camera myself on Amazon and did purchase it with my own money. Um, the manufacturer of it afterwards did ask me to uh, complete an installation video for them and so I was going to do one anyways and uh, so this will be used for that as well. I will be doing uh, a full review of the uh, camera system uh, at a future time after I've had some time to actually work with it. My first impressions are it's actually it's pretty good and uh, the picture is very clear. Uh, but again, a full review to follow. But a couple sections. Um, at this time code, you will find kind of the overview of uh, the full camera system. And then at this time code, you'll find um, to where I have actually gone in and removed my old uh, camera system and explained uh, some of the setups and some of my thinking on some of the things that I used and was able to reuse. Starting at this time code, uh, you will see the installation of the actual uh, backup camera system starting and then finally at this time cold you see the actual installation of the camera on the RV. Um, my RV is 30 feet in length and uh, I'll walk you through on how to uh, connect your camera into your uh, into your RV's wiring system uh, through the uh, marker lights in the back. As with anything if you're uncomfortable um, or you need help uh, please reach out to somebody. There are some some issues um, when you're installing this you need to be careful of. You want to make sure you avoid if your uh, RV's got a airbag system that you're definitely not going anywhere near um, that power line. This uh, camera system does offer multiple ways to install uh, the actual device itself. I've chosen to go the more difficult route to make a uh, permanent installation. Uh, they do give you different options to where you can actually really within probably five or ten minutes you can have the uh, monitor set up inside of the RV ready to go uh, and then probably spend about another hour, hour and a half installing uh, the camera system in the back if you're comfortable um, with doing soldering, basic wiring techniques, uh, a little bit of drilling and stuff like that. This isn't a full instructional video on how to drill, how to use uh, multi-testers, or anything like this, but it is a video uh, to walk you through the important steps uh, to have a successful install. As with anything, if you do enjoy this video, uh, you like its content, uh, please subscribe, please like, uh, hit that bell uh, so you're notified of any future up updates that I may put out. And as well, again, I will be doing a, a full review of uh, the backup system after I spent a month or two with it on the road. Thanks everybody, enjoy the video, and we'll see you again. crazy. Today we're sitting in our motorhome. You may be asking why we're sitting in here. Well, uh, at the end of last year our backup camera died and so I went on a mission to try and find one. The previous one was a wired system and, and I wasn't able to find the exact same system anymore and so I went and found a wireless one. We're going to be trying the Xerox Club backup camera system or the Zero X camera backup system. It is a wireless system that includes two cameras. The system includes a 7-inch screen, which is wireless. Includes two cameras, three antennas, two for the cameras and one for the back of the screen. Some mounting hardware. Is also some hardware to which can be set up so that you can remove your screen. There's just a, a thumb screw here which allows you to remove the unit from your uh, RV or from your truck. It includes three power cords and 3M tape. Um, a cover for your screen so you're able to see it a little bit better. 
various melting hardware and screws, and uh, a cigarette lighter input. There are multiple ways to uh, connect your LCD screen to uh, power. Uh, you can use the included uh, adapter here, which will plug directly into your cigarette lighter. Um, it just has an on-off button. You can find a constant power or a uh, ignition switched uh, power line underneath your dash um, and use a, a wire tap to vamp into that. You can also run the power directly through uh, from the vehicle battery and put an inline fuse. Or what I'm going to do is I've gone to the local automotive store and I found a, a power vamp which I'm going to connect into my fuse box, um, allowing me to give me a fusible link to connect for power. Here's my current uh, system. It is a black and white uh, backup monitor. It's a Clarion. It did die, like I mentioned last year, and this is the reason why um, I want to replace it. The uh, screen has just gone blank on me, and I wasn't able to find any easy replacements. I will be mounting the screen actually up on top of the dash here. I will be removing the uh, old uh, backup camera system. I'm going to be replacing the uh, deck I have up there with a double DIN system which will give me access uh, to uh, GPS and GPS maps. So when I am traveling, um, I do have uh, the ability to have turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions. If you wish to see that in a future video, uh, please comment, uh, please give me some feedback and I'll show you that process. Instead of recording me removing the whole uh, dasher, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna remove, there's a bunch of screws that are located uh, over here which will remove the faceplate, which will give me access back to the camera and be able to pull it out. If uh, yours will obviously be different, um, but when you see it next, uh, this will have been removed. It's a little box here. As I was reaching up behind, I can feel the cords and stuff going in from behind. It appears I can probably just push push the actual TV out from behind. So that's what I'll do. Actually, here it comes. And there's the connections. I'll just remove those connections. So the next thing I want to do is I want to find a place on my dash to where it's not going to obstruct my view, but it's going to sit nice and flat. And so this looks like it's probably going to be uh, a good location for me. It's off on the right hand side. It's uh, not in my line of sight completely. And so I think I'll mark it here. What I'll do is I'll just uh, take a pencil and mark on both sides. I'll remove um, the screen from the mount, the mounting holes there. And then I'll just uh, take a, a small drill bit and I'll drill a couple pilot holes. The way this goes together is there's a uh, a little plastic piece that covers uh, both the holes that has a small little dimple in it and that goes between the mount and the screen and then you just take the two thumb screws and you screw them in. So what I've done is I've uh, marked the two outer rings there so I can twist and turn the orientation just a little bit and then use that to mount this, the screw. So I'm just going to take a, a small drill, I'm going to drill a hole in the top of the dash to know that once you've done this um, you've got some permanent holes in here as well as I need to drill a small hole in behind which will allow me to pull uh, the power the power plug through the top of the dash down on the bottom to where I can get it connected to the power source. So I'm not completely confident that the uh, screws included will hold in the plastic dash, so I'm just going to use some uh, nuts and some bolts and some washers. I'll wash it underneath of the dash with the nut uh, to give it some good support, and then uh, we'll just screw it in that way. All right, so I've got the mount mounted. It's good and solid. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, these plastic yokes or plastic parts on the side of the screen in between the mount and then put in the thumb screws. As well as I'm going to drill a, a small hole to allow the power line to go straight down through the dash. On the back of the screen you want to make sure that you screw on your antenna. So here it's mounted on the dash, here's the power cable coming through. Um, I'm going to use one of the included lengths of uh, power cable to connect to the power lines. And again, the easiest way is to use a cigarette lighter adapter. You can probably, if you just use the stick-on plus uh, stick-on mount plus uh, the cigarette lighter, you can probably have this done in about uh, five or ten minutes. 
um, or you can go through a little more work if you want to make it a little more permanent. Okay, what I'm doing here is I've uh, pulled out this 15 amp fuse, and uh, some, you should check to see what uh, circuit it's on, what you're trying to take the power from. I've installed that uh, power tap or power vamp, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick uh, this 15 amp fuse back in the end here and then it's going to give me power out of this line uh, for the backup camera. I'm just probing to make sure that I've got power. You definitely do not want to tap into the airbag or any circuit like that um, as that would be a very dangerous situation. If you're uncomfortable doing this, uh, please consult somebody to help you with it. Okay, because uh, this is going to be a power line, I'm going to mark the uh, blue wire. I don't actually have uh, any red wire, so I need to use some red electrical tape, and I'm actually going to mark it red on the end, just to indicate that this is a hot line. And on the other end, up on the dash, I'll do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to strip it. Slide on some uh, heat shrink. I'm going to slide it a little ways down the wire so it doesn't shrink on me in case I get a little bit too much heat in there. Strip this one. Make this a little easier on myself and take it out so I'm not having to stretch. To get the strongest connection, what you want to try and do is uh, feed the wires into each other, twist it off. Using an acid core solder or maybe a little flux, I'm just going to tin the end. I come in behind and hold the soldering iron here and try to pull the solder into the wires. So once you're done your solder connection, you want to feel to see if there's any burrs. I'm feeling one here. Take your soldering iron and try to flatten it out, or I'm just going to take a pair of side cutters and carefully cut that burr off. I don't want that to poke through my insulation. There we go. I'm going to pull my uh, heat shrink over my joint. Now you can use a lighter, you can use a heat gun, you can even use the uh, soldering iron to try to shrink it up. If you're having to do a lot of these, I would suggest a cigarette lighter or a heat gun. There we go. And that's never going to come apart. Plug it in, I'm going to route the wires back through the back there. Snap back into place. And then when I'm done, I'm going to clean up and tie all my wires up to make sure they stay out of the way and they're not going to be rubbing on any metal or anything that's going to cause a short later on. Since I'm already going uh, this far, I'm going to install a USB uh, charging station inside the RV. I don't have one currently, um, so this way I'm able to charge my phone and other devices as I'm traveling. It, it includes a voltmeter, so it'll give me a kind of like an also running status of the battery as I'm driving instead of just the idiot light. I'm going to use a one and a quarter inch uh, hole saw 
to drill the hole through there and then I'm just going to push it through and uh, connect the power wires. Using one and a quarter inch uh, bimetal drill bit. Probably don't need to use a bimetal, but. Careful for burrs. Test fit. And that should work. There's just a nut that screws up in from behind. So I'm going to attach my wires and push that through. Well, I did end up using the bullet connectors um, to do this part of the wiring. I've got the power wire coming in from the fuse box. So the ground coming in from the back of the dash. And this is the uh, power connection from the display. On the right hand side here, I've got uh, the ground leading back to the uh, USB charge control or USB charger. And I've also got the power going back um, for the USB charger as well as a small fuse. My old camera. Uh, this one has stopped working. What I'm going to do is, you notice I've got the marker lights up there. I'm going to be pulling the power from the center marker light. So when I've got the uh, RV running and the headlights on, um, it should be supplying power to the camera. I'm going to need to climb up there and see how this one is set up and see if that's how they've done it or if I need to do it through another process. Here's a closer view of the old camera. You'll see that they've uh, run the cable through the back. Again, I'm not sure if it's going into the marker light or down the back of the RV. And I'll be pulling power from there. Probably want to try and put this back in there because it's a power line or it's, a, it's an actual physical line going from the front of the cab to the back. So if I ever need that, I can use this at a later date. I'm just going to cut it off here. I'll tie it on to the power cable and uh, that way I can fish it out later if I need to. Uh, Alright, so I started the vehicle. I need to determine that my marker light is actually working before I try to tap into it. So um, I know that it's in a working state and not thinking afterwards I may have done something to it. So that's the one to the left. You notice here that this one's burnt out, the one I'm trying to tie into. Now I need to, oh there it is. I guess I do have power, so I guess I'm good. So what I'm showing here is I'm checking to make sure which one is the positive and which one is the uh, uh, negative wire. I wanna make sure I am connecting the red to the red being the positive. Once I find a positive voltage of 11.7 to 11.8 volts, I know, and it's in the positive, I know I have found the positive wire and I will connect the red one to that. I initially had tried to uh, connect to the two wires here on the back of the marker light using some uh, inline wire taps, but they didn't work because the uh, uh, power wires from the cameras were way too small. And so I had to solder directly onto the actual um, wires here. And so what I'm showing here is a black wire which I will have to solder on. We'll have to wrap around the bare wire on each side having peeled back some of the insulation and uh, I'm going to do that for the right one as well and um, then I'm going to tape it up soldered on the uh, left positive wire and I'm also showing where I've stripped away the insulation for the uh, black grounding wire which I'll be uh, connecting here in just a couple minutes. Um, what I ended up doing is I tinned the actual uh, area that I stripped away the insulation from and then I wrapped around um, the grounding wire from the camera and then soldered it and then wrapped it up in electrical tape. Now it's time to create a hole to which to feed your wire through so that it's not hanging out in the outside. Uh, what I'm showing here is already done for me but you can use a drill or you can use a Dremel tool or you can use a file. The trick is to go nice and slow so that you uh, make a nice clean entrance which you can fill up with silicone later. Or you can also maybe go through your marker light but if you're going to do that you may get some moisture um, going into there. Um, the biggest thing is, is just take your time and make sure that it's uh, nice and clean and uh, you can seal it. Okay, I'm uh, going to install the bracket here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up on the side of the RV 
and I'm going to uh, mark the location to which I want to do uh, with a pencil. I'm going to use the two outer rings there. Uh, the holes you see were actually there from the previous camera, but I'm going to mark it and now use the two outside holes and that way I can adjust the uh, amount in both orientations up or down a little bit. Here I am, I'm taking a drill, I've uh, gone with my pencil mark, I am drilling it out because you notice that the uh, previous two screws or bolts that were in there, uh, they caused a spider cracking, so I wanted to make sure that it didn't happen. When you do mount your camera around the two outer rings there, you'll want to use that to lock your camera into place. Once you've adjusted your inclination uh, down or straight back, you want to come back here and actually put in two additional bolts on either side. There are washers, little plastic washers, that go uh, between the mount and the hex screws that you use. Here you want to make sure you do include your antenna. The camera has been mounted. Now it's time to tuck the power cable back into place, but I can run some electrical tape around these two connections. That way it does not come undone. The red button here, this is used to sync your camera, which I'll talk about later in the video. It is waterproof. I did get some confirmation from the vendor, but I am going to tuck it down inside just because I don't want any water penetration. Hopefully it doesn't lose sync. I really wish they included a sync button on the actual camera itself. A couple things. Um, the antenna in the back here comes out of the top, and so you really can't, you need to mount it high up on your trailer because it gets blocked. And so unless you're going straight down, it gets in the way. And so I had to remove it and remount it there. As well as I've gone in here and I've uh, resealed that with silicone. I've got this back in. Um, she's mounted. These are the screws on the side that I was talking about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside. I'm going to take a look at it and see if I like the angle. If I'm going to come back, I'm going to turn it. And then I'm going to put in probably one on each side that should lock in place so it doesn't move on me. So make sure you do that so that uh, it'll maintain the uh, angle of orientation to which you really want to see. And one last thing. I don't know, some people really like this, so I'm going to do the reveal. We've got a full away of the plastic coating. Do not forget to do that. And there you go. It's installed inside the uh, RV. It is an HD picture. You'll notice you can actually see the rungs on the ladders and you can make out the uh, individual rocks. So it is very clear. Um, it is quite sunny back there, so it does well in the sunlight. And you can see the hitch in the bottom. Um, I will do a full review of uh, the back of this camera. The one thing um, that I wish it had is a little, maybe a little bit more uh, field of view in the up and down. The other camera I know I could see the hitch and see a little more behind me and so I think for my next install of the second camera I'll probably uh, attach it to one of the other backup lights like I did the other one and uh, do it as a straight back view so I can see the trailer that I'm towing and the vehicles behind me. But this will give me a really good view when I'm trying to back into a spot or trying to uh, connect my RV unit to an actual trailer. Here is the uh, USB charger. All right, so I can now plug my cell phone in and keep it charged as I'm traveling and uh, not have to worry about running out of batteries. And again, it just gives me a little indication of uh, the charge level on the actual battery itself. The thing I didn't cover because when the uh, unit came to me, it already came uh, paired from the factory, is how to pair your uh, cameras with your LCD screen. So if you do need to pair it, what you need to do is you need to push this key button here for three seconds. And once you've done that, it'll enter into uh, pairing mode. And then on the actual camera itself, there's that red button that you'll want to you'll want to push. And then you continue to push that button until the picture appears up on your uh, screen or your monitor here. And now I've got myself an extra cubby hole. Again, I'll probably um, be putting in doubled in stereo in this. And so if you do want to see that or see that install, please comment below and uh, I'll uh, do my best to try and show the install of that. So I hope you found this useful. Um, yeah, I'll do this later, after our B-roll, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Bye.